I, I was gonna say once we were done with my my drama, definitely want to talk about y'all. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, Spotify's got that money to throw around, and so that I feel like that was kind of, uh, if not the center, but like the, a big piece of the drama that you had was was the Spotify deal and the business side of things. I feel like there was the uh, business side of things, and not, then there was like the so, personal side of things. Not not so much Spotify. I wouldn't say Spotify had anything to do with it at all. I, I, as a collective, I won't speak for everyone, but as I remember it, the entire crew, not just myself, Joe and Mo, weren't really into that deal. It didn't make much sense right. for us. I mean, of course, more money than we've ever seen in our entire lives, but mm -hmm. in the long run, you know, sometimes owning your likeness for fucking perpetuity is just not ideal for anyone. Right. right. Um, so, you know, I mean, listen, sometimes you have to turn down more uh, money than you've I, ever seen. It, <laughs> I tip. Yeah, I that, tip that never, again, that was a Reddit theory. That, that never... So divided us no one was ever like resenting him in that capacity like why the fuck didn't you take that no we all agree like this is not the mm -hmm. right deal for us at all and you know we've been playing the long game since, since the beginning one, yeah. so why, why all of a sudden jump now yeah you, yeah so what would you think it was more of a business thing or a personal thing that led to the end of the joe budget show uh personal podcast? personal personal yeah. for sure because i mean it all relates back to personal at the end of the day yeah so you know even when you're working with your friends you take business personally yeah <laughs> Because it, you, it were moves you boys with Joe first, like how, before how, the podcast. Yeah, yeah. We, so I mean, we were, were well, friends. Yeah, yeah, friends before that. And then we're like, you know, what we should do a, a show together. Or was it yeah, like he, he had um, a show? Was like, he's because uh, he's, he's had, you know, he's had. He's this is kind of his mo. And oh, for, you know, for sure. Door uh, of okay. people. Absolutely. I mean, the quote unquote content game it came at the perfect time for his career. I feel yeah. like he was he was had been around long enough had had really started to understand what was going on and then it became lucrative that. to just talk and that it was like a great that kind of like curmudgeon fuck it i'm gonna let it rip on that you yeah know, man no, i got dude. some anger to get off some thoughts to get off for sure uh good timing but so he 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 uh he his, approaches you to jump on so him and uh marissa mendez shout out to marissa had started uh, i forgot february 2000 14 or 15. Okay. Whenever NBA All-Star Weekend was in New York, if I remember correct. Okay. Uh, and I was more or less, I wouldn't say producing, but, you know, I was uploading all the stuff, creating all the pages, doing the artwork. Yeah. I taught myself fucking uh, Pro Tools just to edit mm -hmm. shit. Like, I was just mm -hmm. doing that type of stuff. And around episode five or six, um, Joe was like, Yo, just sit here, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, because... Let me bounce off of you. Yeah, it was just certain things that he wanted to talk about that maybe Marissa wasn't privy to or just wasn't her interest or anything like that so i was just a, a third mic kind of chilling in the background and would come in whenever and mm -hmm. that just slowly built into an actual podcast yeah so and then all all is good or was it always like kind of rocky behind the scenes and like this all like when nah. when, when did shit start to get like tense um it happened fast or was it like this is getting it's more it's more tough difficult? it's tough to say i, I feel like you're always the last person to know about yourself. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So there may have been tension prior to that uh, mm -hmm. we didn't even really notice or maybe thought it was just, you know, how friends act with mm -hmm. each other. But yeah, I don't know if there was really a, a pinpoint into it, but, you know, things fall apart slowly. Right. A lot of times. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know, things start it's adding like a up. And it's like a divorce, man. It's like. All yeah. of a sudden you look up and you're like, man, we, we are not like the same couple. We're not the same team. Yeah, anymore. like when one drastic thing happens, the reason it can break up everything is because for the past few years, things have just slowly been rocky. Been it's not that one moment that breaks or, everything up. It's right. everything leading up. And it's like when that moment happens, it triggers everything else and it makes more of an explosion. Did you have any moments that you were like, prior to the breakup being like, you know, so maybe months, weeks, years but prior? where some shit went down, you were uncomfortable with it, and were like, like I should have spoke up and said, like, you know, Joe or Ma, like, fuck that, you shouldn't have said this, you shouldn't have done that, and you let it slide? Like, do you have any, yeah, which, you which you could have like, salvaged which it you along the way? Because I think, again, think about that with like my marriage, where it was like, you know, if, I, if I'd spoken up five years earlier, then we wouldn't even be in this spot now. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's why hindsight is twenty twenty, and mm -hmm. every bad situation shouldn't be in vain, and learn from it, and all that corny bumper sticker shit. But, yep. of course, I've, I think, the three of us would take full accountability and not communicating things correctly. Mm -hmm. But then that also, even on a, a deeper point, I think is just male friendship. Yes, and like yes. we just don't talk to each other no. like that. No, never. Like, never, man. and you know, like, ev everyone's no, cool. Slide, Fuck it. It'll be fine. It, mm -hmm. But then, you know, male friendship and then you mix in business and shit. And then especially particularly with the podcast world, like there is, there's ego and there's some insecurities involved. Absolutely. And, like, 
you know, our Erica, our CEO, is you know she came in and she was a woman and it was a big deal, a female at Barstool, and she says uh, one day when she's all done, she's gonna write her book, and I think what she said she's gonna call it something like. Like men are chicks. Men are the biggest chicks. Like the oh, same, my God. the same thing that we, the the, the the stereotypes that we apply to women. She's like, you guys are the ones who are catty and gossipy and backstabbing 100%. and insecure. And so you know when when you got fans who are taking sides and you've got you know, it's just it's just a a powder keg for like yeah. if this doesn't stay in balance, it's gonna blow the fuck up. Yeah, and at least at least women get it out by yes. By, goss- by gossiping and yeah, yeah, like yeah. group chats and yes. like yeah, we men just, men should dabble in group chats more to get all this passive aggressiveness out because <laughs> yes. we just we just boil it up and then yeah. explode yep. and then we die and it's, <laughs> we fucking die. Yep, I'm going to keep all my emotions deep down. I'm gonna push it into my fucking like, toes, yes. man, and then it's gonna eat at me until I'm unhealthy and then I die. Yeah, that's, that's the that's, blueprint, that's and the I know it, and why, I'm not gonna change it. It's the reason why men lead in heart attacks. Like, I yep. when was the last 